customer of mine brought me this partially unboxed ZX Spectrum. It doesn't look too bad, but lots of these connectors and cables are not from, from the computer, and some other connectors have been snipped off, and they are in this kind of bag of stuff. So let's see what we have here and see what we can do to make this ZX Spectrum look brand new again. So let's do it. So let's see what we have inside the box. Taking the cover off, we have the ZX Spectrum. It's a bit dusty and with a bit of dirt and the faceplate is trying to come off but it doesn't look too bad I think everything is inside the screws were already open sometimes but yeah it's in okay condition lots of stuff in here this is an earplug I don't think this is from the computer this is an old mono earplug from an FM radio or an AM radio or something okay, this is a very very old earplug with its carrying case yeah, more or less in rough shape let's put this aside because I don't think this belongs to the computer but it's a nice classic piece of tech then we have a Philips thing made in Holland this has like a DIN plug or an XLR plug something like that yeah, this is not from the computer either. It's cool, but it's not from here. Then we have our bag of connectors that we need to check what connectors we have inside. They are well secured with lots of these strips. Well, uh, I think I'm going to count them because they are <laughs> far a lot more than it should be needed. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Someone was scared that these connectors would fly away. So, they are well secured. So, Let's put them all together to show to the customer later. And then we will unbox the connectors. And on the connector thing we have the original connector for the ZX Spectrum cut away. Um, a connector similar to the original of the ZX Spectrum cut away also I think it's yeah it's the same no this one is this one is 2.1 millimeters and this one is 2.3 or 2.5 something like that this looks like a generic universal connector for does that spectrum also I don't think it will fit because I think it's a smaller size but we can test it yeah, it fits snugly, but fits. So we have a connector that we can use if necessary. And we have a crocodile clip. So two useful things and two not so useful things. Okay, maybe these ones will go in the trash or to show to later show the to the customer. But these ones we can use them for something. Let's put them aside. 
then we have some kind of strong wire I don't think this will be needed and we have a piece of solder I don't know if it's good or not maybe we can use it but it looks very old then regarding the cables one thing that people should try to do when they store away their electronics it's to put the cables on uh, cellophane bags or in plastic bags in order to avoid the contact between the plastic the black plastic of the cables of the wiring with the styrofoam casing on the machines because they react and they melt to each other and this is a nightmare to take off okay i've spent numerous hours of my work doing this removing styrofoam glued to the cables okay that's also a service that i that i do to the customers that is to clean the cables of the styrofoam and it's very time consuming and uh, i hate to do it but i have to do it to make the computers look good and the cables look good it's terrible and uh, we can feel it when we are taking stuff apart as you can see here in the boxes everything has reacted to the cable contacts and it looks and it feels terrible okay it ruins the styrofoam it ruins the cables you need to use a very powerful solvent to clean them so uh, please stop doing it or if you can don't put your cables close to the styrofoam use a plastic bag to separate them well here we have what looks like an antenna cable but done with a speaker cable or something with a two wire cable i don't think i'm going to use this i'll put it aside also and then we have our last thing inside the box also with the cables very glued to the styrofoam as you can see this is a nightmare yeah this is very very sticky and it was well welded to the styrofoam okay please put everything in a bag this model of transformer is a Nero 1400 and we will later open it up see if the diodes are okay see if the tensions are okay and replace the capacitors inside one cool thing made in portugal okay this one this kind of of power supplies sinclair power supplies were made in portugal so cool thing to see on products and then we have our styrofoam with some bug wings and bug legs yeah it's part of the charm of finding something on your attic or that's been sitting there for too many years and uh, lots of animals are resting in peace in this place so after taking everything out of the box let's investigate how is the power supply how is the computer because these are our two main stars of today so first let's just test the power supply to see if there was nothing wrong with it by the time it was turned off for the last time voltage meter yep power supply is dead totally dead so we have a dead power supply and uh -oh. yeah something smells burned and it's hot inside so i can feel the heat on the side of the power supply and uh, a, a certain smell of burning electronics is coming out so you know what we have to do let's open it up Be careful of the capacitors. Yeah, smoke is coming out. 
not too much but some smoke has come out and I don't know where it came from but I feel heat on this side of the board and it's on these diodes these diodes are very warm I need to check be very careful not to put your fingers next to the big capacitor it might be out of spec but it has enough juice to give you a very strong jolt as you can see the cap has no power if I short it nothing happens I'm doing this with the power supply obviously disconnected from the wall and now we need to investigate why is this smoking hot and smelling bad so the wire looks to be very well connected I'll put this in diode mode tests because I think some of the diodes are shorted yep they are reading the same thing both ways and they should only have a reading in one way so well let's take it apart because these diodes look all dead and we will also replace this capacitor because it's very old and it's probably also done and it's quite warm also yeah everything is warming quite warming quite a lot so it needs to be changed well the whole transformer is quite warm also I hope it's not that but uh, it's a possibility these circuit boards are more or less challenging because they are welded from the back so we need to straighten up these terminals and then unsolder them from the back so usually I try to lift lift them with something that is pointy and then use these pliers to make it straight let's put some fresh solder in we need to heat these terminals very well in order to get the board to come out of its position it needs to carry a lot of heat so here we go slowly okay first part is out second part is also out so sometimes it happens like this and the traces on the board lift up this one is okay but this one lifted a bit uh, they are still there so while I'm soldering it back in it will be okay uh, I'll try to check with a multimeter between both cables if we have any kind of yep we have a short okay maybe this was the main problem both poles of the output cable are shorting or the capacitor or the cable one of them is shorted so let's take the cable out let's take the cable out and see how it goes and cable is out of the board let's see if the short was on the cable nope cable is not shorting so yep shorted capacitor on the power supply so this was the main problem all along so fraco means weak in portuguese with a c instead of a k it's a well suited name let's desolder it and see if the short goes away and the diodes are good so everything was heating up so I thought first thing was the diodes I also saw some smoke while opening it up uh, let's see if there's nothing else fried around here because this feels very warm to the touch well the capacitor is out and let's measure it shorted as a wire this filter cap is shorted 4716 volts I'll see if I have a replacement on my parts 
And now we can check the diodes. Let's see if the rectifying bridge, the full bridge rectifier is okay. 0 0.49, nothing. 0 0.5, nothing, nothing. 0 0.5, nothing, 0 0.5. Our diodes are all alive and safe. Okay, so these diodes are good. We just need a new cap and reconnect the wires for testing. So let's do that. Well, I think we will have to leave this repair in standby because I don't have any capacitor like this on my parts bin and I have to go buy it. Meanwhile, I will try to look and fix our main star of the show, the ZX Spectrum. So let's clean everything up, give a good clean to these parts, and we will start with the next machine on this video. Also a nice touch saying Portugal TMX. I'm not from those times, or maybe I am from those times, but I haven't lived it that uh, ZX Spectrum craze when I was a kid. When I was a kid, the things we were looking for were Mega Drives, Game Gears, the Nintendo NES. I only had a friend who had one. He was the king of the school because he had uh, an NES at home and everyone went there to play. Those were more or less the times where I started looking at games. Let's move on to the ZX Spectrum. So here we are for the main star of the show, our beautiful ZX Spectrum. So if you have one of these, the first thing you should not do is to plug it right into the original power supply and to the TV to see if it works or not. If you happen to find one of these, it, it's advisable to have some precautions first. First, if possible, use a regulated power supply. It's 9 volts positive on the outside, negative on the inside. You can find similar ones on Roland synthesizers or Roland sampling pads or something. Some other devices also use 9 volts positive on the outside you must do a visual inspection of the machine and the first thing I see is the power connector bent upwards against the case. This is something that happens on some of these computers and you need to be aware of this to see if it was a badly replaced connector or if it's strained and has some kind of cold solder joints on there. So what we need to do when we find a computer like this, is opening it up very carefully, not to tear up the, the membrane of the keyboard and see if there is something mainly at first sight, if there's something burned or if some of the capacitors in here are visibly leaking because uh, I've already found some that uh, after opening the computer, there was liquid in, in the form of a bubble or something coming out of the capacitors and that's very corrosive and um, before taking out the capacitors and before doing uh, work on the board is advisable to do some tests with a multimeter i'll put a link to a video by uh, jules per colomb a video that has some years that explains you all the testing you should do before powering up your computer because these computers these old computers have some kind of lower ram uh, these screws are chirping but they, they have a lower ram which uses uh, three dif different tensions 12 volts plus 5 and minus 5 and if something goes wrong uh, with a power supply section or something all the RAM can be fried in one go. So what we are going to do is perform the main checks. That is to see if there is any kind of short on the main power rails. And then uh, we will see if there is any kind of short 
on the um, on the transistors for the power supply and see if there is nothing uh, obviously bad going on on the computer before turning it on so let's open it up quite slowly to see what is the health condition of the membranes and as I'm seeing in here there are a lot of cracks on these membranes I don't think they will work properly because these cracks are going through I think they are going through the second layer yeah, maybe we can see yeah, there's a discoloration on the layer where the contacts is because this has two layers one layer have the metal the metal tracks from all the keys and the other is just like support and has no electronic effect usually the layer with no electronic effect uh, gets broken but sometimes both get broken and uh, can cause malfunctioning of the keys so i will open this enough to pull them by hand I don't think if I don't know if the camera will get out of battery but okay I've pulled one now I'm going to pull the other there's a lot less space on this side okay so now the computer is open we can see this is an issue 3b board looks very well everything looks quite new the ULA socket the Z80 is not there's the chip socketed that I don't think there's factory maybe it's a prior repair that has been done these two transistors look nice these also look, look nice well uh, this doesn't look too bad at first sight so power connector looks solid voltage regulator yeah everything looks more or less okay so we need to check this side of the membrane because it's the side where the metal contacts are and where the electrical signal is passed to the board on this side is the opposite the metal contacts are on the top layer we might get away with this membrane but we can only confirm and test after the computer is assembled to test so I'll do I'll perform some of the testing and then I'll see if I can plug it in to the power supply see how much it is consuming and see if we have a signal on the TV so let's perform some basic tests I'll jump across it because there is a lot of information about it on YouTube and you can check the video I mentioned by Jules per column that is very good well this computer already had some membrane problems this is a part of a membrane cut off yeah somebody already cut problematic part yeah nothing looks too bad I'll give a clean to the edge connector I will connect it with my diagnostics board that's a very useful tool that I'll show you next for you to see so this is usual model M332 and just needs a good clean so nothing shorting nothing too bad let's power up this little baby and see how healthy it is so here i have the connector from my bench power supply i will check if the voltage and polarity is correct yep we have nine volts on the outside so i can plug this into the computer and see if there is any kind of current draw that looks okay so 
the joints here on the power supply connector are acceptable I think it was mounted tilted, tilted up on purpose so I will also use a magnificent tool sold by Bite the Light and this was a customer of mine that offered it to the to the shop it's a very very useful and very powerful tool for you to diagnose ZX Spectrums and some other uh, similar machines from the same family so check out Bite the Light to see this thing in action so I'll plug it in on the edge connector of the ZX Spectrum it stands like this I made a 3D printed case for it so we will plug the computer like this try to find the signal on the TV because this one is not the composite mode done yet and uh, we will see if the computer is healthy or not I'll give an eye on the bench power supply to see how it goes and an eye on these four LEDs that show us the state of all the power rails of the ZX Spectrum so let's test it 3, 2, 1 we don't have 12 volts I think there's something with the uh, power supply circuit on this computer so I'll just give it a quick power on again nope. okay we don't have the 12 volt circuit so there's something wrong on this board on the power supply section that needs to be checked out let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with it and so we're back on the blue mat looking at the board something I've done before I can't see any any cold solder joint or something yeah, everything looks quite well the only thing I could only do is to clean the edge connector again check if there's something oh I found something weird yep I don't think it has anything to do with the 12 volt circuit but there's something that looks like a mistake from factory let me see if I can zoom in to see it better here is a shiny spot and here is a component floating of the board and soldered yeah this came like this from factory the leg of the component has never has never seen solder before and we need to to put it back so good quality standards building these computers well let's keep cleaning the connector later we will clean it with a fiberglass pan and make it look like brand new i will just repair that capacitor that it's <clears throat> that is tilted no we'll have to do it fixes inside a fix something that will be very frequent in this channel so I'll clear this cap later because I will need my solder sucker to hit and I'll be right back to that part well, there's something strange in here. So, this looks like uh, overheating on this PCB. So, I don't know if you can see it well, but there's a kind of bubble inside the, the circuit board in here can see it's like a discoloration and this looks weird this this usually happens 
when something is uh, overheated but uh, as far as I'm, I can see here I don't see anything strange on the top part of the board but on the underside of the board there's this kind of bubble well uh, I'll keep soldering the the remaining components and we'll see that in a moment because it might be a clue of uh, what might might be wrong with this with this circuit okay capacitor is back everything is back i will just put the part that was badly soldered I'll grab my tweezers okay it's there so i've soldered the the part that was that was not well positioned and not soldered at all uh, back in its place and we will test again voltages on this board so i know that we can't have voltages missing on the lower ram for too long because if we do we might fry it and it's expensive to replace them all so let's see if we still have the plus 12 volts missing power supply on yep 12 volts are missing and power consumption is 0 0.8 something amps that's a bit a bit too much so there's really something wrong with uh, or with the power supply section or something else that's drawing too much power uh, on this board well let's investigate well i reassembled everything back and we are not without the 12 volt rail one thing that i will do is remove everything that it's not needed to boot the computer I'll remove the upper RAM and I'll change the original ULA with another one not to stress this one too much in case that it is good so we will use a ULA that I know uh, that have graphical glitches but it works it's good to test computers without stressing too much this rare and expensive part so I'll take everything out and let's test again so I'll put this old ULA that I have that I know that has graphical glitches but it's nice to be stressed and to test the image output so let's see how the power consumption is without the upper RAM installed well computer is booting so this sound is a good sign of life progress or the ula or the upper ram were making a fault on this computer so let's hook it up to the tv and see what kind of image do we have to make it easier to look on the tv without having to tune the channel i'll make the composite mod first and uh, it's easier to see on the SCART input of the TV instead of having to tune the channel. So I'll do that and we'll go to the TV and test this computer because it's now giving us signs of life. Let's go. So I've noticed that this metal shield is messing with the camera white balance. So I'll try to keep it at an angle from now on to improve the glare okay so i have here a test jig that is a composite rca video plug and uh, an alligator clip and a 100 microfarad 10 volt capacitor and i weld the positive pole of the capacitor to this wire that is the composite signal coming in the rf modulator and i get the video signal out of here and i use the crocodile clip 
to attach to the outer part of the RF shield. So, simple and easy mod to test a ZX Spectrum without having to tune it on the TV. I'll turn the board over and weld the capacitor right into this spot because it's being stubborn but we add more than it okay so now we can go hook it up to the TV and test if we get a valid video signal so I have the computer hooked up to the TV I have here my jig for the composite video and here is our diagnostics board I'll connect the power and see uh, what kind of image do we get so I'll point the camera to the TV the image will have some glitches because I know this ULA produces graphical glitches so three two one let's go Whoop! image is clear this ULA tilt is the image to the left and the, most of the glitches are the graphical bars that you can see ROM is ok it detects it to be a 16k spectrum and uh, I think most of the computer is working well I see the 12 volt rail is acceptable and I think the ROM will page in quite successfully so let's see yep computer boots so let's see if the problem now lies on the U old ULA or if it lies on the upper RAM first thing that I will be replacing is the ULA pull out the one that fails that has the graphical glitches and put the one that was coming on the computer let's turn it on and see how it goes 3, 2, 1, turning it on uh oh this is without the diagnostics interface let's put the diagnostics interface in and see if we get anything different okay it loads but we have no sound hmm and we have more graphical glitches yep yeah this ULA is uh, in terrible shape it passes some of the tests but it's all glitching and uh, full of trouble so yep main problem on this computer is the ULA chip and uh, we need to find a modern replacement for it yeah it the computer works normally the CPU is okay but the ULA is not we now know what we have to do let's see if it passes all the RAM tests so I'll, first I'll turn the computer on without the diagnostics card yep it took longer on that black screen that means it detected and um, used it the 48k bytes of RAM now with the diagnostics card yep it produces sound it produces a good image let's see how it passes the, the RAM test we need to check if we have any bad chips so it will make a walk test first pass everything is passing so yeah I think our RAM our upper RAM is good our lower RAM is good also because the image is okay we just have the glitch on the ULA that I know that exists and uh, everything looks to be uh, as good as new on this computer okay it's the question of popping uh, a new ULA in changing the capacitors and uh, the computer is good to go we just need to have uh, faith in our membrane to see um, if it's working so everything is good with the computer let's keep doing the job now I will take this chance to test the keyboard membrane to see if it's detecting the keys correctly these membranes are very sensitive to tensions to strains and now we can turn the computer on and see if it detects key pressing so turning it on again
and we are not getting anything from the keys so another point to review sometimes to revive the keyboard membrane you can get here on this place where this fits in, on the motherboard you can get to this place where this uh, fits on the motherboard connectors and snip the point with the scissors you can take one or two millimeters away from this front to help it make contact with new metal we will just cut a small part in here and we'll see if this improves anything on the connection okay i've cut one side i will now cut this side also and we will see if this solves our key detecting problem okay now i have new metal on this point i will assemble the membrane on the computer and we will test again but i think this membrane is beyond repair or beyond its normal functioning so let's power on the computer and see if we have any kind of reaction of any key but no completely dead membrane i will put a new membrane on the computer just to confirm if there's nothing wrong with it and it's really the membrane that is dead here i have a new test membrane that is that i bought from for a computer of mine and uh, i will use it to test this customer's computer so let's plug it in insert the connectors on the motherboard turn on the computer and okay it detects key pressing so the computer is okay it detects all rows okay so everything is good with the computer and now we are sure that we have a dead membrane on the keyboard one thing that might happen to you when straightening up these little tabs is the case of the tabs getting pulled away from the main faceplate and it, you will end up with this single metal piece that was glued in here pulled away don't worry it's just a matter of cleaning up the glue and putting new super glue in and it will do the job the important thing is that you don't you do not stress anything because this aluminum shape this uh, this aluminum faceplate after you bend it a first time it's very very hard for you to get rid of any kind of bending marks that it it might get so it's important to never never make it uh, bend in any way okay otherwise you will never get it back to the original shape so we remove the faceplate and we will now see what is the state of the membrane under all this uh, grime of the keyboard yeah pretty gross removing this single tab it's all bent but we will straighten it up with a pair of pliers and after some work it will look like new again and it will hold our faceplate in place so this is all looking quite gross and i'll pull it off and here we have our membrane that looks like it had some kind of coffee in here and let's pull it out and see what is the real condition of all these joints as you can see by this discoloration this is not a good sign probably the main contacts on this membrane are 
there. Yeah, it, it will be very hard to fix this. Okay, this discoloration usually means that uh, the metal, the, the conductive ink has gone uh, beyond repair. So sometimes you can use new ink, sometimes you can solder when the, the ink is, is still white, is still good uh, and, and uh, it has a metallic surface. But when it doesn't have that metallic surface, it's very hard for you to do anything to the membrane. Let's see if we can do anything to this, but I don't have any hopes at all. Well, taking a second look at the membrane, uh, it, it looks pretty terrible. Most of that thing that looked like coffee got inside the pad. And as you can see, and as you can also hear, the buttons are gluing inside so this is not good the pads and the connections inside are broken yeah all the conductive ink inside is not okay so this membrane is not worth it and so after finding that cut on the membrane I turned the computer on and the membrane partially came to life but after the number 6 everything that happens on the right corner yeah it's not registering so and our sticky keys are terrible the sticky keys fail a lot so yeah, one more reason not to use this membrane ever again. So let's trash it and put the new one. And uh, I've been scraping this green stuff off the, the metal pieces. And I will show you on the microscope because it's very satisfying. It looks, it looks fun, it looks nice. Uh, I don't know what is this green thing, but it looks like some kind of old tape. Let's clean it, clean the case, clean everything, put the new membrane in, put the new ULA, and the computer is done. So, warm and soapy water, and time to give it a bath. Clean very well around every key with long brush. And we will try to take all that grime away and make the keyboard look like new. The faceplate also came out quite nice. And I think the, the computer will look awesome. Well, while we wait for the ZX Spectrum ULA to come in the mail, we will take care of the power supply. So, let's prepare this board that I've taken the bed capacitor out and I have here a new electrolytic capacitor and we will see if just changing that fixes the power supply. It's looking good. Let's solder it to the, to the transformer. Let's, let's first check one thing, that we don't have the primary of the transformer with any kind of connection to the secondary of the transformer. Because if that happens, our power supply would be dead. So, let's turn on this thing. And, yep, we have no connection between the primary and the secondary of the power supply. So that's a good thing, let's weld it here. This is a welding, a bit complicated to do because it's on the inside of the transformer and we need to make it, we need to weld it from this side with very little space to insert our soldering iron and hold our circuit board in place. So. Now that 
everything looks okay. The multimeter into voltage DC, and then I'll put my alligator clips holding the wires, and I'll turn the transformer on from a safe distance because I'm a chicken and I don't like to see things exploding in my face. So, turning on the transformer in 3, 2, 1. Yep, 15.5 volts. Nothing smoking. The capacitor doesn't look like it's going to blow up. I'll power it off. I'll just measure the capacitor. And yeah, it's basically it's empty but it never hurts to empty it to empty it a little bit more I'm using a 5 watt 15 ohm resistor so I think the transformer is alive again we don't have anything heating so I would say this is fixed so I will bend these tabs like it was from factory and it's just a matter of screwing everything back together well to finish the ZX Spectrum power adapter the only thing left to do is to solder a new connector on the cable so we will use one of the connectors that the customer sent inside of the box it's a very old style connector and I think it will suit quite well the computer and connector is done yeah looks nice let's test with a multimeter to see if we got the polarity right so negative on the inside positive on the outside it's done so now let's assemble the ULA on the computer and it's now time to look at this wonderful ZX Spectrum so we need to fix this tab on the faceplate and then put a new membrane this is my test ULA that has graphical issues and we will replace it. This is the original ULA that is broken and we will replace it by something that arrived on the mail done by Charlie Ingley from VRetro and that's a VLA 82 this is a replacement for the original ULA and I've used this these ULAs on a lot of spectrums and they all work absolutely fine and they are uh, very very reliable I've never seen any one of these fail so this is the chip in question the VLA 82 and uh, I think it is an FPGA uh, modern version of the ULA and it works like a charm so let's put it in here and it just it's just a drop-in replacement for the original it's just a bit harder to put in with this socket but it will fall in eventually so there we have it the VLA82 is installed, so now it's just a matter of testing and if everything is okay, we will replace all the capacitors and put some thermal compound on the voltage regulator. So here we have our board with our VLA82 installed and our diagnostic board. So let's see if it powers on. Yep. Everything's working correctly. Let's see if the RAM test passes. Yep. 
Sinclair Research. Uh, everything is working well. Let's replace the capacitors, put some thermal compound on the voltage regulator and reassemble everything. We will now reassemble the front assembly. The easiest part is to put the membrane in. These are very high quality membranes. Then you just simply put the keyboard over it and you put the, the faceplate over it. Some faceplates are glued, these ones are not. I prefer these ones. Sometimes I put some double sided tape on here in the middle to make it adhere strongly to the to the front assembly. But I prefer these ones with the tabs where you bend the tabs and it it will stay there. So I prefer these ones with the tabs that are permanently attached. Sometimes the tabs detach, that's what happened with this one. And I will show you how to glue it back in place on the right place. Because as you can see here, with this light, you see that there is uh, some margin to put it on various positions on the horizontal axis, but you can't change, you, you can't slide too much up and down because it will be uh, out of alignment with the top, the top slot. Okay, so you have to match the top slot and the bottom slot and uh, that's important, otherwise your tab uh, won't be glued in the correct position. What we must do is to temporarily put the faceplate in here and temporarily put this this tab also that is here on the left side this tab will slide in in this space okay you have some cuts on the rubber where you should put these parts yeah as you can see they go in there exactly on the cuts on the on the rubber on the rubber keys and as you press it they will appear on this side and you have to bend them to fix the face plate but this one is not fixed and now it's just a matter of gluing it using the uh, position in place where you will match the rubber cut and the distance between these two. Usually I use super glue, just a small amount and see if this time it will fix on a more permanent way. So let's, let's secure it from this side, make sure it does a good connection and that it won't lift from its place and then we need to take it off and fix it with a slightly more permanent solution so let's see if it comes off with the faceplate yes it's coming off no glue was spit out around the the tab so Let's put this carefully in here and now we can put some more glue around the tab and we can use another super glue secret that a lot of people know, baking soda. You can make a mechanical connection between this brass part and also between the aluminum and this will make a stronger connection. I will only sand it when it dries really well. So I will let it dry, I will clean it off and it will be good to go. As you can see, you can sand it and it will be fine. And the important is to have a strong mechanical connection. And now we can put it in place. So, now we align 
all the parts, we align the faceplate, and as you can see, this is looking really nice. I will just do as I told you before. Now we will put the faceplate in its place. I don't like to glue in these corners because they will always lift and there's that's something really difficult to avoid because the curvature of the plastic is not the same curvature on the metal and now we will get a plier and do a very small curvature on the tabs So everything looks secure. Yep, let's reassemble the rest. After we do the recap. I will not show the recap because there are plenty of recap videos on YouTube. Uh, from a lot of years, every YouTuber has a recap video. But I will show you one thing that I found on this ZX Spectrum board. So it's not the first time that I see someone doing this. And it's something really problematic that can give you a lot of headaches. So let me zoom in and show you what I mean. I was looking at this board and I found here on the voltage regulator that the last person who did some kind of maintenance in here I don't know if you can see but there is a small gap between the voltage regulator and the heatsink hmm. I don't know if you can see this pretty well let me just turn on some lighting there's a gap in here and I will show you I'll probably show you on the microscope what happened in here and this is something that can kill your ZX Spectrum so it's important to avoid okay here it is and as you can see I'll grab my pliers to show you this is the, vol the voltage regulator plate, this is the heat sink, and this is the screw. And look what's in between them. A washer. Yep. And as you can see, I've found plenty of ZX Spectrums with this thing assembled like this. It's the worst thing you can do because this... 7805 regulator needs to be in contact with a heat sink in order to dissipate its heat otherwise it will get very hot and it can die and depending on the way it dies it can kill your ZX spectrum so please if you try to do something like this at least don't use the washer okay because this washer is killing the function of the heat sink and it can kill your zx spectrum too okay i've seen this error lots of times and uh, it makes me sick just to look at it okay please the washer is used to lock the nut that's underneath or you don't use a washer at all, okay? Don't be the guy who puts a washer between the part and its heatsink. Yeah, let's fix this. So, I remove the nut. Now I can remove the screw. And as you can see, there's a washer that was fixing nothing, just causing 
future trouble. Yeah, the heat sink is even marked, yeah, and this is not good. So the heat sink should be in direct contact with the part and not with the washer in between them. Well, let's recap. And so I've recapped this board. I've performed a DC DC mod that uh, you can see that it's better to improve the power the power circuit of these boards making them more reliable and now I will correctly assemble the heat sink into this power regulator thermal compound on the heat sink just a thin layer you spread it you put the screw over all the parts and now you use the washer that was in between the heat sink and the regulator and after the washer you put your nut not your actual nut after all this you find a soft surface you press on top of it and with the correct screwdriver you tighten it up until it offers some resistance and as you can see this is perfectly assembled there's a, just a little squash just a little flush of thermal compound coming around the regulator and the regulator is right right against the heatsink so this is the correct way to mount it please don't put your washers between the voltage regulator and the heatsink so this machine is ready I will just tidy up the composite mod in here and then we will load some games and play something hopefully our board is done composite mod DC DC mod and thermal compound and recap new ULA and uh, I don't think there's anything else to improve in here so now reassembling everything and admire the object of our work this pretty ZX Spectrum I'll put the label in here and the nice, the nice thing is that my labeling machine has the same pinout and voltage as the ZX Spectrum you Nice. Nice. And now Hmm. Nice. So, our ZX Spectrum is ready. Let's connect everything to the TV and do what needs to be done. I'm using the bench power supply in case something is wrong. Let's turn it on. Oop, everything is working. So I'm using Blaze LX and I can search for whatever game I want. I have some on my favorites, usually I use Manic Miner. Uh -oh. So, second try, load, quote, quote, enter, play on the phone.
Hey, it's working. Okay, left and right. Where is jump? Okay. Let's try to pass the first level. timing now the hardest part is to yeah that I always fail to synchronize the curvature of the jump with the position of the key here we need to wait for the robot to come back oops too soon too soon, not too, too late. Hmm. Oops. Okay. Let's see if this is enough. Here we can do that, let's try to do it the other way, okay. Here is more or less the same. Ah! Shit. Yeah. In some ways it's a stupid game, it's freaking hard. And the other levels are easier than the first one. So, everything is working, games are playing. I think it's time to wrap it up. And so... Our ZX Spectrum adventure comes to an end. It will be missed, but we will have a lot of other fun stuff in the way. So, the only thing that rests now is to clean these wires, and uh, that will be an issue for another video. But for now, we say farewell to this ZX Spectrum. And the only thing left for me to say is Thank you very much for watching, enjoy your time with your families at Christmas and have a Merry Christmas everyone. Have fun, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.